Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be learning about support vector machines regression with Python. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Now when we're dealing with support vector machines regression, many of the steps are the same as when you're doing classification. The primary difference is this. When you are doing support vector machines for regression, your dependent variable is now continuous. That is the primary difference. When you're doing things for classification, you have a categorical variable that is your dependent, vari dependent variable. But in our situation, as I've already mentioned, we are now dealing with a dependent variable that is continuous in nature. So we're gonna go ahead and go through most of the same steps as you can see right here, data preparation, model development, and we're going to use a linear kernel. In other words, when we try to separate or when we try to make our, our calculations here, and we're not really gonna talk about the mathematics behind this, we're gonna be drawing basically straight lines. That's what's gonna be happening here. So here are many of the um, modules we're gonna be using. NumPy, of course, Pandas, Pi Dataset, that's where we're gonna get our dummy data from. We're gonna, again, import from sklearn to SVM, line four, then model selection in line five from sklearn, and then we're going to import the MSE, uh, uh, you know, package or function, if you will, for determining the mean squared error. That's how we're going to evaluate our, our model. There are many other ways that we could evaluate, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna use this one metric. Now, our goal here is we're going to use family income from the OFP data set. You're gonna see that in a second. That's what we're gonna be using as our continuous variable or our dependent continuous variable. So go ahead and run that. So we're gonna do our data preparation now. And so we're going to go ahead and load our data set. Let me go ahead and pull that up for you. And so we're right here. Copy and paste this in for you. So in line one, we're going to load our data set OFP as a data frame. We're going to drop missing values and we're gonna take a quick peek at it using the, the head function. And so here's our data set. Um, there are gonna be some things we have to take care of. So for example, black, sex, and married. We talked about this in a previous video when we did classification. Now we have to, of course, make these dummy variables again because the uh, the, the module, the, the function for running the model cannot handle you know, character data like this. So we're gonna go ahead and make our changes here to create our dummy variables. We did this in a previous video when we were doing classification. So go ahead and paste this in right here. Press Control, Enter. And now you can see how things have been adjusted here. So over here, we have if someone is black, it's a one. If they're not, it's a zero. Male is a one. If they're not a male, it's a zero. Job, etc. So that's taken care of. Wasn't that complicated. Another thing we need to do is we need to scale our variable so that they go from, from a range of zero to one. This is because larger values have more influence in the actual model development or the model predictions if we don't take this into account. So we're gonna go ahead down here and put this in right here. So press this in here, go ahead and set this up again. And now this code right here is for scaling the variables. You take the, uh, the individual value here, whatever it is, subtract the minimum, divided by the max subtracted from the minimum, and that's how you scale it. This is one way, of course. And here's our code again. So you can see that everything is looking nice and neat. All of our values here. So if you look before, scroll over here, we had, you know, sometimes some larger values, not always, but everything is nice and clean and set up very, very neatly now. So let me go ahead and set up our model now. So what we have to do now is we're going to set up our independent and dependent variables. So again, if you wanna know more about the data set, you need to, of course, go into the, the data function from Pi data set, and one of the arguments is show docs. Set that to true, and you can learn a lot of details about these individual variables. To keep the video short, we're not going to talk about that a whole lot. 
but I'm just going to show you how to separate them. So we have a object called X that's going to be for our independent variables. And then everything you see here inside the double brackets is the various variables that I want to use for prediction purposes. These are my predictor variables, if you will. And then we also have an object here called Y and we have our dependent variable family income set here by itself. So you have to separate them in this manner. Now, once we have this done, we get to, of course, now set up our train and test set, which is basically where we're going to divide our data. So 70% of our data, we're going to use that for training our model. And then the last 30%, if you will, is going to be set aside to test and evaluate the performance of the model. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this in. So here's the, the code for this. Um, so all this X train, X train, X underscore train, X underscore test, etc. These are all the individual objects that I'm creating right now. So I'm going to have a train and a test for my independent variables. I'm going to have a train and a test for my dependent variables. The function I'm using here is model selection dot train test split. And then you can see here I'm pulling stuff from the X and the Y objects. Test size equals 0.3. That means that the test data is going to be consistent of 30% of the data. So 0.3 is a decimal. It represents a percent. And then random state equals one. That's setting the seed, if you will. So you can uh, uh, duplicate this. Oh, wait, I forgot to run the code up here. So now this will work. There we go. Now, I'm going to actually make an instance of our model. We're just going to use a good old fashioned linear kernel. Very, very simple. Right here. Run this. And there's also many different types of kernels and the discussion of kernels is beyond the scope of this video, but we're just going to use the SVR kernel. And now we're going to paste right here, the actual training of the model, if you will. So we go ahead and run that and it's done. Now as our final step, we're going to do our prediction here. So down here in model evaluation. And so I'm going to put, uh, press this in or uh, paste this in and we're using the predict uh, function if you will and we're using X test this is the the model that we wanted to to, to evaluate on our, our test data if you will so we go ahead and we run that and you can see nothing happens until you do the final step for this video and that is we calculate the mean squared error and so you can see that right here so you can see we have a function called MSE you put in your prediction data, you put in your, your test data right here, and this is the MSE. Now this value is only really valuable in comparison to other models. So if we wanted to thoroughly test this, we would have to, of course, make other models using you know, other variables maybe, or other types of kernels, or maybe even other types of algorithms, whatever we wanna do. And of course, the, the one that shows the least amount of error, the closer and closer to zero, uh, it indicates that that is the better model at making future predictions. So it's hard to judge the quality of this model with using the mean squared error in, in isolation. However, for our purposes, as we just want to demonstrate how these different algorithms work, we just want to have a simple, simple metric here that we can look at quickly in order to make decisions. So if I wanted to go forward, I might add variables, remove variables. I might use an, a different kernel and I would explore this until I find something that has the least amount of error. That is kind of what my primary goal is. But for our purposes, we're done. So what we're going to do now is we are going to review what we talked about and then conclude this video. So in this video, we learned how to do, how to use support vector machines for not regression or not classification, but for regression. And so when you're doing regression, you are, your dependent variable is continuous in nature. And so you're trying to predict it almost like, you know, linear regression, if you will, basic, you know, uh, regression that we talk about a lot in introduction to statistics. So a lot of this video was spent on preparing the data. We had to, of course, drop the, the any NAs that might be there. We had to, of course, set up our dummy variables here. We had to scale our data. And then we had to set up our object that contained our independent variables. And then we had to set up an object that contained our dependent variables. After we did that, we then made our train and test it and we ran our model. And once we ran our model, we did our prediction with it and we were able to see the MSE at the bottom. MSE stands for mean squared error. 
So the actual process is fairly simple. We could make it more complicated and look at other things like we could have calculated the um, mean square error for the uh, training set, but we kind of skipped that. And we could have did more analysis in terms of various kernels using various, um, uh, various variables as well and made it much richer. But for our purposes, to keep the video short, we're done. So I would like to thank you for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.